Welcome back everyone to section two, functions and models. All right, so the second rule, right? The first rule is that we don't like chaos in mathematics. The second rule for our class uh, is that we wanna study math that can actually be applied to something, right? Some real world situations. Uh, therefore, we in this class are naturally interested in mathematical models. Oh no, I really like blue a lot more than this. I'm sorry. This is very unprofessional. There we go. Mathematical models. Mathematical models. Okay. So we like mathematical models because these things actually explain some real world situation. So I'm going to start with uh, a bit of a classic here. Right? So this is a little bit of review. We've probably seen these things before. They're called exponential functions. Exponential functions. So the claim is, an exponential function is a function that can be written in a certain form. And that form is f of x, so it is a function, and it's a times some b to the x power. Or, if you'd like, right, we can remember that these are spitting out y values, so I could write this y is equal to a times some base, right, this b is usually called the base, b to the x power. And we need some restrictions here. We need that, first of all, b should be greater than zero if you'd like this to be a true uh, exponential function. So we don't want this equal to zero. We don't want it negative, anything like this. And also, we don't want b equal to one. So b should not be equal to one. And so before we actually dive into our example, uh, I've prepared something for us. So let's go ahead and take a look here. This is a wonderful tool here. If you've never used Desmos, I think that's, that's how I pronounce it anyway, uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, this is great for visualizing uh, functions, right? So it's to see what's actually happening here. So I've graphed a couple things here. I've graphed a times b to the x, so you can see that up here. Uh, I've also, also graphed the point 0a, and you can see that 0a is actually on our function, so that's very nice. Uh, and then so it gives you some scales here, and you can kind of see, okay, if I change A, what does that do to the exponential? And then if I change B, what does that do to the exponential? So let's maybe first of all play with A a little bit. So if I change A, you can see that it just raises kind of the starting point, right? This point when X is equal to zero, right? Zero A, 3.9 right now, it just raises and lowers what the function's value is at zero. So that's pretty cool. We can see kind of what's going on here as we change this a value. So that's what a does. You know, the bigger the a, the higher your initial starting value is. Okay, so there's what a is doing. Now b, the base of this exponential. If I increase this, you can see that, well, first of all, our starting point, the zero a doesn't really change at all. But as I change this b value, the higher and higher b gets, you can see the growth rate increases. So it really zooms off to infinity much faster. In fact, let me see, is, can I zoom out? Ooh, fancy. Let's lower our b value and you can see, yes, this makes our rate smaller and bigger. So it zooms off even faster, less and less and less and less. And let's see what happens, right? So one of the conditions was that b should not be equal to one. Let's see what happens if I set b equal to one. Ah, look, so the claim is that nothing really explodes here, but this doesn't look like an exponential. This looks like a straight line, right? This is just a constant function, right? So it's not that one is you know horrible and breaks mathematics or anything like this. It's just not exponential. It's a straight line. It's a constant function. Now let's go, ooh, look at that. Ah, huh, that's fun, right? So as I get less than one, the type, you know, the kind of type of the exponential changes completely. Now it looks like it's decreasing, right? Greater than one increasing, less than one decreasing. So something happens when you make this swap beyond one, smaller than one, you're now in like a different class of exponentials here. We're now decreasing uh, exponentials. Here we're increasing exponentials, but still it has something to do with the growth rate, right? The smaller the value, now the closer to zero, the bigger the growth rate. And now let's see what happens. Can I get zero? Oh, look, at b equals zero, again, it kind of explodes a little bit here, and we get kind of like a straight line, right? So uh, this is, again, why we don't want it to be equal to zero, and we don't want it less than zero. Uh, crazy things happen when you take negative numbers and you raise them to powers. 
Uh, so yes, that is what the exponential looks like. How much fun, right? And so again, I can change the a value. You know what? Let's have a down here and then do this. Uh, look at that. So a small b value less than 1 and a negative a value. Interesting. All right, so that's what our exponentials look like. You can see kind of, right, we know some probably words about like asymptotes or something like this. It looks like uh, zero here is an asymptote. It gets very, very close to zero. Uh, and looks seems like that is an asymptote no matter which a value I choose. And, oh, now the asymptote's kind of in the other direction uh, for this b value. So that's very interesting. So it always seems to have this asymptote. That's nifty. Okay, so that's a little bit about exponential functions. That's what they look like. So let's get to our example here. So the big example that I have here for us today is something about uh, lug nuts, right? Uh, let me see. This doesn't... Oh, no, it is working. Something it's just like freezing or something on me. Hello? Hello? Well, I may need to actually edit this video and cut some of this out. I don't know why... This isn't reacting. I draw and then it goes away. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, I'll at least read the example and let's see if it can wake up and figure it out uh, here in the next 20 seconds. Otherwise, I'll have some work to do. So yes, lug nuts, baseball game, right? And the claim is how many people, right, the demand to see this baseball game depends on the cost of a ticket, right? So you can imagine if the cost is very high, there would be fewer people who would want to go see uh, a baseball game, right? If I said that it costs you $100 to go see the lug nuts play, probably not that many people are willing to pay that money. However, if I say uh, a ticket costs only $3 or something like this, now I think a lot more people are going to want to go uh, see this lug nuts baseball game. Right? So really, the number of people who are showing up is very dependent on the price of the ticket. Ooh, that actually did something. It woke up. Hooray. And no, no, it's officially awake. Good, good, good. There we go. So here we are. We're back. So Q, as I have here, is the average number of thousands of tickets. So right, that's our unit here. So this is thousands of tickets, they would sell if the, each ticket cost P dollars. So here's the P right here, and here's the Q, the output, the dependent variable Q, the number of thousands of tickets they would sell uh, is dependent on the independent variable, right, P, uh, the cost of the ticket. Okay, so the first thing here is that I'd like to use my calculator to plot this curve. So I actually have a calculator, like you guys. Oops, not that one. The other one. Here we go. So I have this calculator like you guys. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot this, you know, just as if I actually had uh, a TI-83 or 84. So let me get my keyboard attached here. There we go. Because I tried this earlier with my finger. It does not work with my finger whatsoever. So, okay. So, plot. So, I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to plot this thing. Maybe. Second. I, I really have a keyboard, I promise. Try it again. y equals. <laughs> All right. What happens if I close this and I ask for another one? Uh, let me see here. Okay, take two, y equals, and okay, so 15,000, uh, let's do times, parentheses, and I have 0.94, close parentheses, raised to the p power. Now for our calculators, we only have one variable name here, it's x, so I'm going to use x to be my independent variable, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and graph. So right over here, graph. And let's see what this looks like. Oh, I see a glimpse of it, but not so much. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to try this zoom, and I'm going to zoom fit, which should be near the bottom here. Uh, zoom fit, good. And let's see what kind of graph it gives me if I do a zoom fit. 
Okay, something like this. Yeah, that makes sense, right? So this is an exponential, but its base is less than one. So we kind of knew that it would be a decreasing exponential. We could also guess, right, its a value here, let's go over here, our a value is 15, so we know that it's gonna cross at a equals 15. So this point right here should probably be 15. Uh, if we learned anything from the Desmos calculator, right? Okay, so let's practice uh, using this exponential um, model here to find out something about uh, the real world. So the first thing, if the price of the ticket was $10, how many tickets would you expect to sell? So, okay, uh, 15, so this is my Q value. Q is uh, the number of thousands of tickets that I would sell. So I want Q equals something. Q equals, and this is going to be 0 0.94, and I'm going to plug in $10 everywhere I see a P. So there we are. And I'm going to use my calculator to go ahead and figure out what that would be equal to. So let's go ahead, second mode to get quit. And I'm going to do 15 times 0.94 raised to the 10th uh, power. And I'm going to be careful. I'm going to do parentheses here for 10 to make sure it knows that I want to raise that entire thing. So 8.9. 0.792267, okay, so 8.079, uh, and change, right? So this is thousands of tickets. So if you'd like to, you could just write 8,079 tickets. That's how many you would expect to sell, right? This is an average. Uh, of course, the games are going to vary and stuff like this. Uh, but I would expect 8,079 tickets and change, right? There was this 2-2, two, two, uh, so on and so forth. So that's how many tickets I would expect to sell. Uh, the next thing, right? So real-world models were very often interested in how much money would I make? So if that's how many tickets I sold, and again, if they were selling at $10 a piece, then I expect that I would make... So money would be equal to 10 times 8,079 tickets. So that's going to be 80,000. $790. That's how much I would expect to make in total. Right? Okay, so there's the first little bit. Let's kind of pump up uh, the complications here. So if I ran a promotional game, right, where the tickets were free, right? So we need to now know Free tickets means that P is equal to zero. How many people would you expect to show up for the game, right? So if P equals zero, how many people would you expect to show up? So, okay, Q is equal to 15 times 0 0.94 raised to the P, right? So in this case, zero. And so uh, I can use my calculator for this, but maybe you also remember that when you take something, you raise it to the zero power, it's just one. So this is really 15 times 1. So this would be 15 thousands of tickets. So if you'd like to, you can write this as 15,000 tickets sold, uh, which probably would mean that there would be 15,000 people showing up. Okay, and the last thing here, the stadium doesn't actually hold 15,000 people, right? It only holds 13,000 people. So the question is, how much should I charge if I want the stadium to be exactly at capacity? So, and I want to, first of all, solve this problem using my calculator, right? So there's a way that we can solve this using our calculator. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring up our calculator again. And I already have this y equals, this function right here. And, and I wanna know when it's equal to 13,000 people, right? So I'm gonna plot another thing, I'm gonna plot 13, right? Because this stands for thousands of people. And so let's go ahead and graph this here. Here we go. And you can see that somewhere these two functions intersect. And the claim is where they intersect, this would be solving for this p value, or in this case, really my x value, right? How much should I charge for a ticket? That's my independent variable. Okay. So the claim is we can solve this with our calculator. And so I'm going to go ahead and do second and trace. So this is calc, second trace to calc. And I want to know where these two things intersect. So there we go, intersect. 
And it's going to have us ask, right, what is the first curve, right? Because we need to know where two curves intersect. If you graphed, you know, 10 curves, it wants to know, well, which two should I be looking at? So, okay, let's go ahead and choose our exponential, right? So that's the y1 value right here. So, okay, yes. Uh, and the second curve, yeah, I only have two curves graphed, so it's going to guess them both. Good. And it wants a guess for an intersection point. So, okay, I'm going to go over here, somewhere in here, and hit enter. And then it's going to calculate, ah, and it gets 2.3127 uh, and change, right? So 2.3127 and change, right? So the claim is this is my x value. This is my independent variable, right? And my independent variable in this case was, do, 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 right? The cost of a ticket. So this is exactly what I wanted. If I want 13,000 people to show up, then I should charge $2.00 and 31 cents. And that would get supposedly, you know, on average, 13,000 people would show up. Now the claim is that we can actually use algebra and properties of logarithms to do this. And if you remember properties of logarithms, then great, you're going to have an easy time with this. But I figured this is a good time to start reviewing uh, because in this class, we're definitely going to use logarithms. So we want to remember kind of what are some of these properties and whatnot. So, okay. Let's go ahead and do this, you know, pretend that we don't have a calculator here and figure out what the answer would be. So I would like 13,000 people and we have, our model says that you would get 15 times 0 0.94 raised to the P. And I want to know P, what should the price of a ticket be, right? This is the thing that I want to solve for. So in this case, probably the first step is to isolate this exponential. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 15 on both sides, right? So this is going to be 13 divided by 15 is equal to 0 0.94 raised to the P power, something like this. And now again, remember, my goal is to solve for P. My goal is to solve for P. So in this case, I want to apply a logarithm on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and use a logarithm, 13 fifteenths logarithm. So I'm applying some function on both sides. And the claim is I want to do this because logarithms have this nifty property. It's called the power rule. And the power rule enables us to take a power like P here and move it down in front. Logarithms are really mysterious creatures, right? There we are. And that's why we like logarithms, right? Because if you want to solve for an exponential, kind of getting out of this exponential spot uh, is the hard part. So now we've officially gotten it out of the exponential. And so the last thing, if I want to solve for P, well, I don't know what this number is. It's some nasty number. I can divide by that, right? Because I want to undo this multiplication right here. So I'm going to go ahead, oops, yeah throw my pen down. I'm going to go ahead and divide by that on both sides. So I get log of 13 fifteenths divided by log of 0.94. And this should be what P is equal to. Let's check, right? Hopefully we get the same answer. Otherwise, I would be worried. So let's go ahead. Here's the log button right here. So log of 13 fifteenths close our parentheses, divide by log of 0.94, close parentheses. Drum roll, please. 2.3127. My goodness, the exact same answer, $2.31. So there's a nice little bit of a review for logarithms for you there. This is the price that we should set if we want exactly 13,000 people to show up. And in general, let me go ahead and remind us one last time, this will be the last thing for the video. So the power rule, power rule for logarithms over here, says that if you have a logarithm of some a raised to some power p, let's say, right? it doesn't matter what it is there, that you can rip down this exponential and put it in front. And while I have this just for kind of the standard log base 10 here, or just, you know, your standard log, right? The claim is that this actually works for any base, uh, but we didn't need that in this case. So that's the power rule. That's kind of what it hinges on here. Uh, and this is what we need to know in order to solve some of these exponential equations. All right, that is it for this section. I'll see you guys next time in 1.3. We're going to start uh, kind of back at the beginning, linear functions. I'll see you then. Let's go ahead. Boop -a -da -boop.